Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In our latest video, we talked about some of the important JMeter architecture elements. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will deep dive into remaining commonly used JMeter architecture elements and they are config elements, controllers, timers and assertions. So without any further delay, let's get started. So let's open the JMeter by going into Apache JMeter folder and then bin folder. Double click the JMeter.bat if you are using the Windows or if you are using Linux or Macs, you can double click the jmeter.sh which will open the jmeter user interface. Since I am using Mac, I am opening the jmeter.sh file. To save some time, I have already created a basic script. Let me quickly open that one. So this script contains one thread group with four HTTP request samplers and then three listeners. I have already discussed these elements in the previous video. If you missed that video, please watch that first and then continue this video. Okay. So I have created these HTTP request samplers using jmeter official website. So whenever we execute the request, the jmeter will try to send the request to jmeter official website so these four requests will try to load the jmeter home page release note page best practices page and then issue trackers page okay before we start discussing the architecture elements let's quickly run the script to make sure that everything is working as expected so in the thread group configuration i have one thread with one loop count okay let's run the script all the four requests successfully sent to the server and we got the 200 response back okay so our basic script is working as expected now let's start with our first element config element Basically, config elements are used to set up default values and variables to be used by the samplers. They are scope specific. It means that you can declare them at the test plan level or sampler level. If they are declared under a sampler, then they are processed before that sampler in the same scope and limited to use only for that sampler. If you define at the test plan level, then it will be used by all the samplers. Okay. So there are many config elements available in JMeter. However, we will cover some of the commonly used or important ones. As we progress with our course, we may use other elements as well. Okay, so let's start with HTTP request defaults. So I have added this HTTP request defaults at the test plan level. Okay, so the main purpose of this HTTP request default is to avoid data duplication and make it test plan more maintainable. In our demo script, we have four HTTP request samplers, right? So we can update the common HTTP request sampler configuration options in HTTP request defaults. Let's see what are the common configuration options. So if you see all the four requests, protocol and the server name is common, right? Release nodes also having the same protocol and the server name best practices also having the same protocol and the server name and then issue tracker also having the same protocol and the server name since these are common in all the four request samplers we can update these common configuration options in http request default so that we can avoid the duplication so let's quickly add those protocol and the server information so protocol is https and the server name is jmeter.apache.org okay once you update it you can go to each sampler and then remove it whenever the request sent to the server using these HTTP request samplers, then the JMeter will try to read the protocol and the server name information from the HTTP request defaults. Okay, so let's clear the results and rerun this script. So we have successful response again. So if you check the home page and go to request, you can see the request sent to jmeter.apache.org and we did not specify anything in the HTTP request sampler. So the JMeter is trying to read this information from the HTTP request default. So that is the basic purpose of HTTP request defaults. Okay, now let's move on to the next config element that is HTTP header manager. In some situations, we may need to send some additional information to the server to fill its requirements. So we will send those information in the form of headers. When we access the application in the browser, then the browser will take care of sending that information. So in JMeter, we can send that information using the config element called HTTP header manager. To add that HTTP header manager element, right click the test plan, add config element and then HTTP header manager. Again, I'm adding this element at the test plan level. Okay. So basically HTTP header manager element lets you add or override the HTTP request headers. With the latest versions, JMeter supports multiple header managers. If you have multiple headers, then the header entries are matched to form the list for the sampler. It is not mandatory that to have a separate header manager for each element unless if any specific unique header need to be sent to the server using that sampler request. Okay. So in HTTP header manager configuration options, we have name and comment same like other elements. We can keep the default names or we can override with some meaningful names. Okay. And then we have header section with name and value. So to add any headers to the HTTP header manager, you just need to click add button, which will create an empty record. So you can fill the header information here. Basically the header usually contains a name and value pair like user agent is the name and then the value of that user agent. Similarly, accept, etc. Okay. For example, accept language is a header defines the language of the page that the browser prefers to receive the response from the server. Okay. So let's say 
en us that means we are telling to the server that we prefer to receive the response in english we can also add another header called accept encoding and the value is gzip deflate br okay this accept encoding header indicates the content encoding usually compression algorithm that the client can understand if the server receives this header in the request then it will understand that the client is expecting the compression algorithm in these forms like gzip deflate and br okay so before running the script let's quickly go to the results and then check the request headers to see if we have any accept language or accept encoding so we don't have those headers let's quickly run the script without clearing the results so that we can compare so we have another set of http requests which are successful so let's check the first one so we have added two request header accept and language and then accept encoding so we can see those http request headers here all these four requests has the http request headers this is because we have added the http header manager at the test plan level let's clear the results and then move this http header manager to home page so now the scope of the http header manager is limited to home page http request sampler only so let's run this script again now if you go to home page as expected we should see the two request headers right and second third and fourth request should not contain any http request headers this is because we move the http header manager to home page level right so let's move it back to the test plan level and the next element is http cookie manager to add the cookie manager again we can add it either test plan level or the sampler level so i'm just adding it at the test plan level Basically a cookie is a file that is stored on the client's computer for tracking purposes. For example, if you add an item to image and cart and next day when you open the image and site, you still can see the item in the cart, right? How does the site knows that you have an item in the cart? It's because of the cookies. In JMeter, we can handle cookies using HTTP cookie manager element. It helps to simulate the real web browser behavior and also it stores and send cookies like a web browser. If HTTP sampler response has cookies, then this cookie manager will store them in the jmeters cookie storage area and it will be used to all future requests to that particular website okay so for http cookie manager also we have name and comments same like other elements we can keep the default names or we can change it to some meaningful names and comments and then in the option sections we have clear cookies each iteration so if this option is selected then all the server defined cookies are cleared each time the thread group is executing okay and then we have used thread group configuration to control cookie clearing so so this option provides the ability to configure whether a new iteration is with a new user or with the same user it is same as same user on each iteration in the thread group so if you go to thread group we have same user on each iteration so use thread group configuration to control cookie clearing is also a same option okay and then we have cookie policy so we have different policies listed here we can choose the appropriate one by default the standard policy is selected basically cookie policy is a document containing a list of all the cookies used on a website along with the detailed information about each cookie and then you have user defined cookies panel with name value domain path and secure columns so you can add cookies in this panel so if you add cookies in this panel then they will be shared by all jmeter threads let's add a sample cookie so you must be wondering where i got this cookie information right so if you go to apache jmeter website jmeter.apache.org and then go to developers tools under network tab reload the page Select the Apache JMeter.org and then in the cookie section, you have some information GA and then the value domain path, right? You can use this information to fill in the user defined cookies panel. So before we execute, let's disable the cookie manager and run the script once to verify whether we have any cookie elements in the request. It is saying no cookies. Okay. So let's enable again, rerun the script to see if JMeter is sending this cookie. Okay. Let's go to the results. If you see the home page, we have a cookie data, right? So you can also send cookies cookies with the help of http cookie manager let's disable the http header manager and cookie manager we don't need to send those headers and cookies okay just for demonstration purpose i have added those elements so let's move on to our next element which is http cache manager so to add http cache manager again click on the test plan add config elements and then http cache manager again i'm adding the http cache manager config element at the test plan level so in general browsers will have some special features to reduce the network traffic that 
makes the communication between client and server faster than usual okay it is done with one of the feature called caching using this feature the downloaded resources will be stored in the temporary storage location so that they can be accessed more quickly in jmeter we can use http cache manager for adding cache functionality to http request to simulate browser cache feature if you go back to the chrome browser right now i got all 200 server response because in the developers tools network tab we have an option to disable the cache so that means whenever we load this page it will try to disable the cache so let's uncheck this option and then clear the results and reload this page so now if you observe the responses everything is getting from the disk or memory cache right so this is what exactly happened when somebody is accessing the application so for the first time the browser will try to get the resources from the server and it will store it in the memory or disk cache and the user try to make a subsequent request for the same website instead of getting it from the server it will try to look for those resources in the cache if it is available then it will try to load them from the cache okay to simulate this kind of behavior in jmeter meter we can use the HTTP cache manager element so this element is used to reproduce the realistic browser behavior during the performance test it allows to cache the static files like images CSS and JS files so that if the same resource is requested then the subsequent request can be used from the cache without requesting from the server so every resource downloaded from the server has last modified value in the header let's quickly disable this element and then rerun the script go to the results and then response data headers so every resource downloaded from the server has last modified value in the header which indicates that the last modified time of the resource and also we have e tag which is an identifier of the specific version of the resource so if the http cache manager is used then for every new sampler it verifies the available cache entries using these headers before making a new request to the web server so let's enable it so in the configuration option same like other elements we have name and comments we can either keep the default options or we can change with the meaningful names and then we have clear cache each iteration so if this option is selected then the cache is cleared at the start of the thread whenever there's a new iteration started then jmeter will try to clear the cache that means every time the jmeter will try to get the resource from the server okay and then we have use thread group configuration to control cache clearing this option provides the ability to configure whether a new iteration is with a new user or with the same user again it is mapped with the option same user on each iteration in the thread group and then we have use cache control slash expires header when processing get request this option will be selected by default that means the cache control or expires value is checked against the current time if the request is a get request and the timestamp is in the future then this sampler returns immediately without requesting the resource from the server okay to validate this you know let's change the loop count to two okay and then rerun the script even though we requested jmeter to run two iterations however the jmeter executed only one iteration because in the http cache manager we have selected this use cache control expires header since it is a get request and the timestamp of those elements is in the future it did not request anything to the server right the sampler returns immediately so that's what exactly happened okay so whenever you are using http cache manager please make sure of this option if your intention is to use this option that is fine otherwise this option is selected by default so you have to uncheck this option okay so the final configuration option is max number of elements in cache by default it stores 5000 elements in cache per virtual user thread using least recently used algorithm as page replacement policy if you increase high value then you might be consuming more memory which may trigger out of memory exception in case there is no sufficient memory to handle all the cache elements okay and the final config element that we are going to discuss today is the defined variables so to add that element again right click on the test plan or thread group add and then config element user defined variables so the user defined variables are used to define the variables that are used throughout the test plan they are processed in this order they are appear in the test plan from top to bottom and shared across all thread groups so that is why it is always recommended to place them in the test plan or at the start of the test group this element we have already discussed the same element is available at the test plan level as well so if you go to the test plan you can see there is a section called user defined variables right so this is exactly the same as the user defined variables so you can define the variables and the test plan level that will be shared across all the thread groups or if you want to keep those variables per thread group then you can use the user defined variables element and then 
add them to the thread group or wherever it is required okay for example if i move this to thread group so whatever the variables that i'm going to define inside this user defined variables then those will only be shared in this thread group the next geometry architecture element that we are going to discuss is controllers basically these controllers determine the order in which the samplers are processed so we have different controllers available in JMeter and just to let you know that it is not possible to add those controllers at the test plan level. So if you right click test plan and add and then you cannot find that controller option here, right? So the controllers can only be added at the thread group levels. If you right click the thread group and then add, you can see logic controller. So these are all the different controllers that we have in JMeter. So we can add them based on our requirement. So the first one from this logic controller list is simple controller. So let's add that simple controller. So the simple controller serves as a logical container to group together various samplers, controllers and listeners. It does not provide functionality other than facilitating the logical grouping of the element. Okay. And again, it does not impact the execution flow directly. However, styled elements will be executed according to JMeter standard execution flow. So you can group all these HTTP request sampler under the simple controller. Okay. So let's run this script now. As we see, we did not see any impact of adding this simple controller, right? It is just only for grouping purposes. Okay. Let's move these elements back to thread group level and then disable the simple controller. Controller. So the next logic controller that we are going to discuss is loop controller. So the loop control allows you to repeatedly execute its children a certain number of times. Let's say if all these four samplers are under this loop controller, so then we can repeatedly execute it as per our requirement. It is useful for scenarios where you want to repeat certain actions or samplers for multiple times. So in the loop controller configuration options, we have name and comments like other elements and then loop count. In this loop count, we can specify how many times we want the elements to be executed. Let's say if you want to execute this loop for three times, so all the elements under this controller will be executed three times. Let's go to thread group and then make the loop count as one so that we can see the difference. Let's clear the results and then rerun the script. So every element under this loop controller will be executed three times. Now we can see home page executed three times. So we can also see that in the summary report. Instead of hard coding the loop count, we can also use variables or functions to dynamically control the loop count. Okay. So the looping will be done in addition to the loop count specified in the thread group. For example, let's say in the thread group, the loop count is two. So then all these elements will be executed six times because in the loop counter we have three in the loop controller loop count we specified three and that means each iteration we are requesting geometer to execute these elements three times so in thread group we specified the loop count two so it will be two multiplied by three so that means all these four elements will be executed six times let's clear the results and run it again if you go back to summary you can see all four elements executed six times so the next element that we are going to discuss is only once controller so to add that only once controller right click on the thread group add logic controller and then only once controller basically whatever the elements that we are going to add inside this controller will process only once per thread so that's why it is called as only once controller so only once controller will get executed during the first iteration irrespective of loop count value configured in the thread group for example we have loop count as two if we put some elements under this only once controller it will only executed in the first iteration okay let's move the issue tracker to only once controller and then rerun the script so the configuration the thread group is we are asking jmeter to run the script for two iterations and then we have two elements one loop controller and loop count is three that means whatever the elements inside that loop controller will run three times per iteration so that means six times these three elements will be executed and only once controller it will be executed only once so let's Let's rerun the script. If you see the results for the first iteration, loop controller executed these three HTTP request samplers three times, right? And then it executed the fourth issue tracker once because it is only once in controller. And the second iteration, again, it executed three times the elements that are inside the loop controller. Okay. Basically, we use this only once controller for whatever the request that we want to execute only once. If you are familiar with load owner, then we have an action block called v user in it, right? Whatever the code that that we are keeping inside that view the intersection then it will only get executed once we can achieve the similar functionality in jmeter using only once controller okay let's move all these elements to thread group level and disable the loop controller as well as the only once controller so the next element that we are going to discuss is runtime controller to add the runtime controller to the script right click the thread group add logic controller and then runtime controller basically the runtime controller allows you to control the duration for which its child elements like samplers should run okay 
So let's quickly move these four HTTP request samplers under runtime controller. And if you click runtime controller, you can see there is a configuration option called runtime within seconds, within bracket seconds. By default, it specifies one second. So what this setting means, we are asking JMeter to execute all the elements inside the runtime controllers for the number of seconds that we defined here. For example, let's say five seconds. So when we run this script, what JMeter will do every iteration, whatever the elements that we have inside the runtime controllers will run for five seconds. Let's say if you are running two loop counts, then in every loop count, all the elements inside the runtime controller will run for five seconds. Okay, so let's quickly run the script to see the result. We have a timer element on the top most right like we can see here. So first iteration run for five seconds and then I think the second iteration is getting executed. After 10 seconds, the script will be stopped. See the script ran for 10 seconds. And if you go to the summary report, you can see we have 250 requests of home page and 250 of release notes, best practices and issue trackers. Okay. So one thing we should be careful that the elements placed inside the runtime controller do not collectively exceed the specified runtime duration. That means if you are running the test for a specific duration, then we need to make sure that whatever the runtime seconds that we are defining is less than the duration. Otherwise the controller will terminate before the completion of those runtime controller elements. Okay. Let's again move all these four elements to thread group and disable the runtime controller. So the next element that we are going to discuss is random controller. To add the random controller, again, right click the thread group, add logic controller and then random controller. Let's move these four elements under the random controller. Basically random controller allows you to execute its child elements in a random order. It is useful for scenarios where you want to simulate behavior by executing different requests or actions randomly. Okay. So if you click the random controller, we don't have many configurable options. So let's quickly clear the results and run the script. So in thread group, we have loop count as two. So when we executed this script, what JMeter does it randomly pick the elements from this random controller and executed, right? In the first iteration, it executed issue tracker HTTP request and the second iteration, it executed home page. Let's increase the loop count to five and then rerun the script. You can see every time it is picking randomly one HTTP request from this random controller. Okay. If you have this kind of requirement, then you can achieve by using random controller. Let's clear the results and then move these elements back to thread group and then disable. So the next element that we are going to discuss is interleave controller. To add the interleave controller, right click the thread group, add logic controller and then select the interleave controller option. And again, move these elements under interleave controller. Basically, it is used to alternate among the samplers or child controllers placed in it. Okay. So before we run the script, let's quickly check the thread group property. So we have one thread for and then loop count defined as five. Let's quickly clear the results and run the program. So our expectation, if we don't have interleave controller, then all these four elements will be executed five times. That means home page executed five times, release notes five times, best practices five times and issue tracker five times. Since we have interleave controller and the purpose of the interleave controller is to alternate among the samplers. So if you go to the results, we will be seeing only five HTTP sampler requests sent to the server during this execution. In the first iteration or first loop count, JMeter picks home page and then the second loop count, it picks the second element, which is release notes. And then third, in the third loop count, it picks the best practices. And in the fourth loop count, it picks the issue tracker. Since we, we don't have any fifth element, again, it started from the home page. So that is the purpose of the interleave controller. So if you have this kind of alternate HTTP request sampler need to be sent to the server, then you can use the interleave controller. Okay. We have a couple of options in the interleave controller. One, the ignore subcontroller block. So that means the interleave controller will treat the subcontrollers like a single sampler request and only one request is allowed per controller at a time. And if you select the interleave access, interleave across threads, then it will alternate among each of its children controllers for each loop iteration but across all the threads okay let's move the elements back to thread group and disable the interleave controller so the next element that we are going to discuss is transaction controller so right click thread group add and then logic controller transaction controller basically this transaction controller groups a set of elements like samplers controllers etc together to represent a transaction it generates an additional sample which measures the overall time taken to perform the nested test elements for example if you go back to browser and then observe the network tab we have so many resources right and all these resources are for home page only so in general the user action may have multiple requests so it is always group them properly 
with proper transaction names because that is what the business people are going to review right they don't understand individual resources defined in that page so that is for our performance analysis purposes like let's say if page load is taking some x number of seconds which is which deviate the sla then we need that granular details to understand the root cause but for the but from the business people perspective they need to know how much time it is taking to load that home page so to get that kind of metrics we need to use the transaction controller let's add one more transaction controller let's add the first transaction controller as page load and move all these elements to the page load transaction and then let's quickly create two http request samplers under this new transaction controller one for loading the get started page and then the other one for user manual page since we have server name and protocol defined in the http request defaults i did not specify anything here i just only specified the actual resource path because these are two different pages and name the transaction controller as documentation page okay clear the results and run the program let's make the loop count as one and then clear the results run the program so if you observe here so we have four http request samplers and then we also have one additional request which is generated by the transaction controller right this is the page load this is the total response time of all the child request under this transaction controller and similarly we have get started and user manual and jmeter also generated a new request which is a transaction controller if you go to summary page you can see the actual thing so so each individual request response time is this much and the total page Page load is taking a 67 seconds so that means all the http request samplers defined under this transaction controller are taking 67 milliseconds and similarly for documentation page we have two child elements get started and user manual and both are taking 20 milliseconds if you don't want to see the metrics of the child elements we have an option in the transaction controller called generate parent sample if you select this option then jmeter will only show the total response time of the elements inside the transaction controller okay let's clear the results and rerun the program now if you go to resource tree now it is showing page load as the main transaction and then all other elements under this page load as child elements of the transaction controller like home page release notes best practices issue tracker similarly documentation page get started and user manual and in the summary report you can see the actual transactions like page load and documentation so in load runner we we keep a transaction points using lr start transaction and lr end transaction so this transaction controller works similar way okay so if you are familiar with load runner we use lr start transaction and end transaction for setting up a transaction point for the number of frequency of that particular user action in jmeter we can achieve that using this transaction controller okay here we don't need to specify any end instead we can make all the samplers as the transaction controller child request and then select the generate parent sample okay if you want to include the duration of time and pre post processors in the generated sample you can check this option as well okay mostly this kind of transaction controllers will be used for grouping and reporting purposes and the final transaction controller that we are going to discuss is if controller before that let's clean up this so let's disable the documentation page transaction controller we don't need all those additional transaction that we just created and also move these elements to the thread group so by disabling you still have those details but geometry is not considering it is like we are commenting those so controllers okay so to add the if controller again we can right click the thread group add and then logic controller if controller so basically if controller allows you to control the execution of its child elements based on a condition so if you want to execute something based on some specific condition you can use the if controller so if controller also have the name and comments field we can either rename the name or we can keep the default ones and then geometry suggesting us for performance it is advised to check the interpret condition as variable expression so in the configuration options we have interpret condition as variable expression by default it is checked so they are also suggesting to keep this option always so that there will not be any performance issues while using this if controller and they are also suggesting to use jxl3 or groovy evaluating to true or false or a variable that contains true or false so whatever the condition that we want to specify we should specify in the expression field okay so which will evaluate to true or false based on that jmeter will execute the samplers or child elements that are defined inside the if controller we can also use jmeter thread dot last underscore sample underscore ok to test if the last sampler was successful for example let's say we have a home page element once we load the home page then only we can navigate the other pages in such situations we can keep all other elements inside the if controller and then specify the condition as jmeter thread dot last sample underscore ok we don't need 
to write this you can simply click this button that will write the condition for us okay so let's run the program again now we have all four elements successful because there is no issue with the home page and then jmeter check the condition the sampler response is okay then it executed the remaining elements inside that if controller let's say we can override the server name of home page as jmeter apache dot org and then rerun the program so this time the jmeter did not execute the elements defined inside the if controller because the home page response was not okay jmeter will only execute them if the home page response is okay since we we have given the wrong server name and jmeter did not understand what exactly it needs to done then it throws some error so you can check that in the results as well right if you go to the request then in sampler results you can see the response code non http response code unknown host exception so it is getting some exception that is why this response was not okay and then it came to if controller and it evaluated this condition since the previous sample response was not okay then it did not execute any of this request okay so let's clear this and then rerun it uh, now we have all four elements okay so we have other logic controller elements like while controller for each controller switch controller as a practice you can go through the documentation and then try those controllers to see if it is working as per the expectation okay let's move these elements back to thread group and disable the if controller the next architecture element that we are going to discuss is timers again we can add timers at the test plan level as well as the thread group level okay these timer elements are used to pass the jmeter thread for certain amount of time in real time no user will send continuous requests one after another without any pauses right so this pause is also referred as think time these timer elements execute before the execution of each sampler okay so if we place timer in the script so first the timer will get executed and then only the sampler again we have different timers available in jmeter so let's add the timer at the test plan level okay so right click the test plan add and then go to timer so you can see there are different timers available so the first one that we are going to discuss is the constant timer so this constant timer can be used to pause each thread the same amount of time between the requests since it placed at the test plan level this timer will be applicable for all the child elements in the thread groups so in the constant timer configuration options we have an option called thread delay in milliseconds here you need to specify how much time you want that particular thread to be paused so let's make it as 2000 millisecond that means 2 seconds and then rerun the script so if you see here jmeter is executing the http request sampler after every 2 seconds so the total script execution is 8 seconds because after first 2 seconds it executed the home page and then it passed for 2 seconds and then executed release notes and so on okay However, if we move the constant timer to home page sampler, then the home page sampler will wait for the defined time and then the start execution. And all other release notes, best practices, issue tracker will not wait any time. Okay. Let's run the script to understand the behavior. Since constant timer is placed inside the home page, so first it wait for two seconds and then executed the home page and after that it executed all the remaining requests. So let's move this back to the test plan level and disable it. So the next timer element that we are going to discuss is uniform random timer again to add that right click the test plan add and then timer uniform random timer so this element can pass each thread request for a random amount of time so this element can help us to simulate more realistic user behavior by adding random time intervals between the requests so in the previous constant timer it is always you know waiting for that it is always delaying the execution for the given amount of time right but in real time all the users will not wait for one specific time right some people may wait for one second some people may take 10 seconds before executing the request so we need some kind of randomization and that can be achieved using uniform random timer okay so in the uniform random timer we have couple of thread delay properties one is the random delay maximum in milliseconds and then the constant delay offset in milliseconds so we should specify the delay times here for example let's say i want to have a constant delay offset as 2000 and then the random delay is maximum of 1000 so the total delay will be 2000 plus 1000 that is 3000 so what jmeter will do is it will try to randomize the time between 2000 to 3000 milliseconds okay so let's quickly click clear the results and then rerun the script so we have only four requests but the total time it took is 10 seconds so that means for some requests it waited for three seconds and then for some requests it waited for two seconds okay 
So if you want to create this kind of randomization, then you should use the uniform random timer element. Let's clear the results and disable the timer element. And the final timer element that we are going to discuss is the constant throughput timer. To add that, again, right click on the test plan, add timer, constant throughput timer. So this constant throughput timer is used to delay the threads to meet the throughput goals. For example, when we are doing this load test, we will be targeting for some specific throughput like 10 TPS, 20 TPS. Yes. So that means we need to send those many requests to the server within that given second. But in JMeter, we can achieve that using the constant throughput timer. The only thing is we need to specify the throughput per minute. Okay. So we have a couple of options for this constant throughput timer. One is the target throughput. So here we will specify so the maximum number of samples that we want to achieve in given minute. Let's say we want to achieve 10 samples throughput per minute. Okay. And then we have another option called calculate throughput based on. So we can also select the appropriate option here. By default, it is selecting this thread only. So that means each thread will try to maintain the target throughput. So if you have multiple threads, so this 10 samples per minute throughput will be applicable for thread. So that means both threads will try to execute 20 samples per minute. Okay. If you want all threads execute only 10 samples per minute, then you should be using all active threads. So if you select all active threads in the current thread group, then the target throughput is divided among us all active threads in the group or we have some other options also like all active threads shared all active threads in the current thread group shared so basically jmeter is asking us to configure how we want to distribute the throughput okay so to test this out run the test for duration based scenario let's specify the duration as 120 seconds now we are trying to run the test for two minutes and each minute we want 10 sample request as a throughput right so we are only having one thread so let's clear the results and then run the script and view the results so in every minute it will try to execute all the requests within the thread group for 10 times in one minute it will try to send 10 requests within the thread group let's go to thread group and run the test based on the duration okay specify the thread lifetime as 120 seconds and then loop count as infinite because we want jmeter to continuously send the request for 120 seconds based on the throughput that we have defined here okay let's run the script again we are asking jmeter to run the test for two minutes in each minute it will try to send 10 requests to the server okay so we have only four HTTP request samplers inside the thread group so it will try to send 10 times so if you go to the results you can see in 22 seconds we have so far four requests sent to the server and then it is trying again the fifth request it will try to send the number of requests based on the constant throughput timer configuration at the end of the one minute we can see 10 requests sent to the server so in two minutes so we will be seeing 20 requests so the 20 requests are done the test is stopped okay so we can use this constant throughput timer to achieve the desired target throughput okay next let's look at the final architecture elements that is assertion basically all the performance testing tools have a feature to validate the server response on the basis of some predefined conditions that means whatever the response that the server is sending we need to verify whether we are getting the right response or not right otherwise we don't know what is happening when we are accessing the application manually we can see what is the server response but when we are doing the load test the load test is being done by some virtual threads or users so they don't have an ability to understand whether they're getting the right response from the server so we need to keep some assertions or kind of predefined conditions so that these threads will validate if they are getting the right response or not okay so in jmeter we can manage this using the assertion element so based on the condition that we have defined in the assertion jmeter will either pass or fail the request since this validation is happening against the server response it will be executed after the sampler element execution in other words we can say these assertion elements are kind of post processor elements okay so we have so many different assertions available so first let's look at the response assertion we can add the response assertion as a home page child element because we want to verify the response of the home page so let's add the response assertion in response assertion we have so many configurable options available so same like other elements we have name and comments and then apply to section inside the apply to section we have again multiple options like main sample and sub samples main sample only sub samples only or jmeter variable names to use so this means jmeter is asking where we need to apply this assertion whether we need to apply this assertion to main sample and sub samples or main samples only or 
subsamples only. By default, it is selected to main sample. Let's keep the main sample only. And then we have another section called fields to test. So what are the fields that we would like to test using this response assertion? Whether we want to test the text response or we want to test the response code, a response message, response headers, request headers. Based on the requirement, you can select the appropriate option. And then we also have some pattern matching rules, whether we want to use the contains rules or matches rule equals or substring. Basically contains will evaluate as true if the text contains the regular expression pattern. And the same thing as for matches as well. Matches means the whole text has to match using that regular expression pattern. And for equals and substring returns true if the whole text equals the pattern string. Just to let you know that if you are using the equals or substring, these are case sensitive. So you need to make sure that you are trying to give the pattern as exactly in the server response. Otherwise, JMeter will consider it as a fail. Okay, let's quickly disable it and then run the script once to check the response data so that we can use some of the options. Let's see this response as a HTML page so that we can easily understand. Let's use this particular text. What can I do with it? Okay, so let's go back to the response assertion and then add what can I do with it. So we are telling JMeter to verify in the text response with this text. Okay, and, and then you can also put some custom failure message. Let's say the expected response is incorrect. Okay, let's rerun the program. The response assertion is successful because we have the what can I do with it text inside the home page response, right? Let's make this instead of what can I do, what I do with it and then rerun the script. So this time the home page HTTP request is failed and you can see the output as well. So it is telling that the assertion was failed and this is the custom message that we have defined inside the response session, right? So it, we got that message saying that the expected response is incorrect. So you can use these response assertions to validate the server response. Okay, let's disable it. And the next assertion that we are going to discuss is the duration assertion. In the previous assertion, we use some text, right? To verify whether we are getting the right response or not. We can also use the assertion based out of the HTTP sampler duration. So if you have a response time SLE for that request for X number of seconds, you can keep that as a duration assertion so that JMeter will evaluate during the execution whether it got the response for that particular request within the duration. Otherwise, it will fail that request. So let's see view results table and the home page sampler time is 41 milliseconds, right? So let's give the duration in milliseconds as 10 and then rerun the script. This time the home page request is failed. Even though we got the right response, since we had the duration assertion and we can see the message, the operation lasted too long. It took 37 milliseconds but should not have have lasted longer than 10 milliseconds. So that means our expectation is this home page has to be loaded within 10 milliseconds, but the actual time it took is 37 milliseconds. That is why JMeter considered it as failure. Okay. Again, we have different assertions available, like you can use bean shell assertion, XML assertion, JSON assertion. Based on the requirement, you can add the assertion element to your request. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understand the JMeter architecture elements explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or require more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.